Welcome back to Stamping at the Warren and I'm Kim Tolton um, and today I have a little curvy keepsake box for you um, they're beautiful little bags um, and or boxes I suppose they're called rather than bags but they come with a little handle piece so you can tie your ribbon in there um, and they're absolutely fab and they take much more than you would imagine so last year when I made these for my grandchildren um, for a Christmas part of their um, st stocking fillers this actually took a whole regular pack of the large Cadbury's chocolate buttons so they do take quite a lot of um, chocolate or sweeties they'd look brilliant with sugared almonds in you could put handmade little um, truffles in them all sorts of things jewellery I just think it's a beautiful little box and you can just make it masculine or feminine depending on whether you're using cardstock or whether you're using like I am here which is um, the holidays fancy foil vellum which just makes it so simple um, I do do these bags where I heat emboss them myself but this particular vellum um, I'll show you here it's just so beautiful in that you've got this silver on one side so this silver foiled on one side but when you turn it over you actually get what looks like white snowflakes and it's you know I just think it's divine and why heat emboss onto vellum if you've already got the job done for you that's how I see it especially at Christmas when you're trying to make a lot of goodies for your friends and family right so I'm going to put that over there hopefully you can see it in shot and you'll be amazed how quick and simple this bag is to make so the curvy keepsake box um, comes as a framelit, thinlit die. Do they call it? Yeah, thinlit dies. Um, and they do come with tags, um, little tag thinlits here. Got three of them. Um, but with the sentiment that I'm using today, they, they're a little bit too small for that. And I wanted something that made a bit more of a statement. So this is the die and the blades are here they're the raised edges they're not sharp but when they go through the big shot um, they do their job so preferably with the magnetic platform if you don't have a magnetic platform then obviously um, you can use your multi-purpose platform on tap two so none of the flaps are open um, and run it through your big shot in the normal way um, you might need some post-it notes or a bit of um, masking tape on the die and the cardstock just to hold it in place because um, it is a bit of an odd shape so how I do these because this is a like a two-sided vellum you can't just fold it like this because you will end up with two halves that one half is foiled and the other half is white so it doesn't work but this is how I set them out so I do a piece of vellum trimmed to the width just over the width um, so one gets die cut this way through and the other one then you rotate it round and you put it through this way you could sort of cut it into really quite accurate pieces that's just the way that I do it um, and with your big shot you obviously uh, need to do it no wider than the big shot so this is as wide as you can go um, and the die is made specifically for that so you would need to cut this down a bit but this die fits here runs that through your big shot and then you rotate it round do the other end so the sandwich that you want you want your um, magnetic platform or the multi-purpose platform turn it around the right way otherwise you've got the wording upside down and then you put in your piece of fancy foil vellum I think I did it that way so you just trim it to size anyway um, no you don't so you've got your magnetic platform then you have an acrylic plate and ideally you want a pretty flat one um, so not one that's really well used and then you pop your vellum on top of that 
and on top of that goes your die and you will see that this you just have to have a bit of an angle so it has to kind of go through a bit like that yeah you see that otherwise it won't fit through your big shot <clears throat> and then the other piece comes around here and then on goes your top cutting plate you may need to put a shim in there um, and you could just use a piece of cardstock for that um, or you could cut the the vellum down and have two pieces run through making sure the same sides are facing um, and then that way you would be able to get two on two on the one um, but I do find it easier to do it separately and I have done them in bulk I've done them for swaps before and I did nearly a hundred of them in one go um, the old arm was aching a little bit but that was fine Right, so I'm just going to put that through my big shot and I will be back. Okie dokie, so I am back. So there's the die. <coughs> and once you've cut your two pieces, you're left with these. Now you'll want a bone folder um, because you're just going to have to fold these up. So just decide which side you want on the outside. So last time I went with the white. This time I think I will have the silver showing. So you just want to follow the score lines and you do need to be fairly accurate. So just gently fold. Um, if you haven't got it quite right, just redo it. It won't show. And pop your bone folder across. So there's one fold there and then you've got another fold here. So I do do it by hand first to make sure it's in the right place. Then your bone folder. Repeat that <coughs> with the same, this piece. So again, making sure you've got the right side facing. And fold here. So it's handy you get all the score lines. And then the final thing is um, these little handles here. You just want to fold them out. Again, there's a little score line there. So fold those out. Same on this one. Just fold that out. And then just a really quick going over with your bone folder. You don't want much pressure. Okay. you want your tape and tear because the only bit that you're putting adhesive on is the base piece here so I put one piece there and one piece there you want it fairly close to the edge so that it just looks nice remove that tape And this is the bit that is important to get your box so it is all going in the right direction you need to have your pointed ends facing each other and the blunt ends with the handles facing each other not the other way around otherwise you'll have a, you just won't be able to make the box line the base piece up with the score line here worth taking your time with it is difficult for me because I'm under the lights so that piece goes down and this is where the magic happens so all you do is you bring your two rounded handles up you bring one of the long edges and it goes up and over and I'll show you this way and then you bring this piece through so you've got your two little handles in there and that's how it comes out 
you can see it's got the silver side out this time okay and that is your little box made how easy was it i mean it's it's just fab it's really fun um and the sentiment that i'm going to use on the tag i'm going to use um shimmery whisper white cardstock because i'm going with the silver black um theme and i'm using the basic black archival ink pad so ink that up <clears throat> and this stamp comes from a little something um it's in the current seasonal catalogue i think it is in the retiring bin I mean, it's sort of got all sorts of different little occasions, but the one that really struck me that I particularly wanted for this little box is one that says a little something for you. And I just thought that was really sweet. So just stamp that out. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. Turn it over, start again. down you go and you won't actually see that bit that went wrong um, you'll see in a moment so that needs to be punched out using the one and a half inch circle punch it fits in there perfectly and then I have mapped that onto a piece of voil earth uh, silver foil cardstock or foiled silver foiled cardstock and I'm using the um, one and three quarter inch scallop circle punch there you go and you just want to make a little hole just in the the top so the stamped one you just want to make a little hole and through there thread a bit of um, silver cording trim there you go leave reasonably long ends so it all nice it'll nicely dangle tie a little knot down near the sentiment it's right down here and then pop some stamping dimensionals on the good side so see how you can camouflage the fact that the stamping didn't come out quite right so you just want three little stamping dimensionals Remove the topping. And then that then gets mounted onto your silver foil layer. And you can, if you're not happy with the placement, you can just lift it. I'm not entirely happy with that. just want it a little bit more central there you go so that's a little tag and then that's it all that does is then it goes through here tie another little knot just a gentle one and a little bow going to do it as a complete bow like a half bow there you go and then you have a little bit of the cording trim and you can just coil that just so it goes a little bit more and there you have your little bag look how sweet is that who wouldn't want something like that 
so that's a little gift box for today I'll be coming up with some other ideas over the next couple of weeks um, with the um, oh dear brain dead with the um, curvy keepsake box um, so where we're using punch art or using cardstock that we stamp that sort of thing so there will be you will be seeing a bit more but I just wanted to show you how to make the basic box um, so you can start having a go um, and getting your supplies in so you can order the dies via my online store details of those you can find in the um, more information below today's video in YouTube or on my blog at www stamping at the warren dot uk um, and there will be a, a written tutorial that goes alongside today's video um, I hope you enjoy watching and um, you come back tomorrow for another gift bag solution which tomorrow is going to be the petite cafe petite cafe bags and we're going to be doing some masking and spritzing techniques so i'll see you tomorrow for that tata for now